Today's the day. Today's the day that I'm going to see how much of an overclock I can get out of my Ryzen CPU with the current liquid cooling system that I have on it. Now, I think it's a bit of a poignant thing to do today because um, the new Ryzen CPUs are coming out shortly and there's all this news about them going to be having a new turbo boost speed of 4.35 gigahertz. So my kind of goal for today is to see if I can match that speed with my current CPU. Now, this is, this is funny because um, I'm almost definitely not going to be able to, but I'm gonna push everything to the limit and I'm gonna see how far I can take the system so that we can see how much of a benefit, how much of an increase in performance this really is going to the new CPU so that we have a bench line for like the really hardcore overclock on a Ryzen 1700X. So yeah, wish me luck. Let's hope it doesn't end in just like four gigahertz. But before I do anything, I think I think I need some coffee before I take on this this very daring feat. Oh. Okay, so first things first, gonna go into the BIOS and push everything with the liquid cooling system to its absolute limit. So this means 100% on the fans, 100% on the pump, uh, which is gonna drop the temperatures down quite a lot. I've actually done a video um, detailing how much of a difference this makes when it comes to CPU temperatures, which I'll have linked in the description below. Just to make it clear, how I'm gonna be doing the testing of the system with each step of overclock is gonna be with Cinebench. I'm only gonna use Cinebench because, I mean, it's a decent enough test and stability, and even at just four gigahertz, I've already struggled with stability on the system in the past. So I just wanna see what the maximum overclock is that I can get using a more basic test like Cinebench, something that all of you can do at home as well. So I just got 4.08 gigahertz to run successfully on Cinebench and it gave me a score of 1770, which is like a hundred points more than 4.05 gigahertz was. Um, so let's see if I can get 4.1 gigahertz running. So it seems as though I've pretty much run into a brick wall very early on because I'm at 4.08 gigahertz and it, that's as far as I can go. When I try and push it just one step up to 4.1 gigahertz, it just doesn't run. Uh, not, Cinebench gets about two seconds into it and it crashes, uh, it just doesn't seem to work. There isn't significantly higher temperatures at that point. I don't know, it just seems as though the CPU can't handle it beyond that. So now I'm gonna see how far I can take the CPU uh, by turning off cores on the CPU. So I'm gonna use Ryzen Master, the application, to turn off some of the cores and then see how far I can push it. Now what I've done to this point is I've actually turned off four of the cores, so it effectively turns it into a quad core and Cinebench ran at 4.1 gigahertz. So let's see how far we can take it from here. And for some reason that worked. Uh, at 4.15 gigahertz, I actually finished a Cinebench run, which is pretty exciting actually. I think that's quite a high clock to get on, on, on a Ryzen CPU. Now the thing is, because it's only four cores running, um, it's not really a particularly high performance kind of benchmark run, and I was only getting 842 points in Cinebench, as opposed to the 1770 that I got with all eight cores on. But let's push forward and see how far 
we can get these clocks. Okay, so the system's busy booting, um, and yes, it's actually successfully booted with uh, a 4.2 gigahertz overclock going. Now again, this is with only four cores running, but let's see if Cinebench works. So that went pretty badly, pretty quickly. As you can see, the screen kind of flickering behind me there. Um, it's it's just, it's, it's died a little. So it seems as though uh, 4.15 gigahertz is the furthest I'm gonna get it with four cores. Because if you look over here, it's, it's just, it's died again. And this isn't even with running Cinebench. This was literally just trying to boot the system. It hasn't even successfully booted. Where it successfully booted with 4.2 gigahertz. So I don't, I don't really know. But let's see if we can tweak it a little and uh, get it up and running at 4.2 gigahertz. So we've decided to call it a bit of a day because there's a kind of weird cabbage burny smelling smell coming from somewhere in the flat and well, that's the smell that hardware makes when it's about to catch on fire, so I think I'm gonna leave it there. So the maximum overclock I could get out of it was 4.08 gigahertz with all eight cores on, which is not very big. And then when I turned four of the cores off, I could get it to 4.15 gigahertz, but it performed way worse because, well, half the cores weren't active. Now, this was a fairly short, fairly pointless video, but I think the reason I made it is so that I have a bit of a, a, bit of a framework of reference for when the new Ryzen CPUs are launched so we can see how much of an increase in actual core speed we can get out of them. Because at this point, that's one of the biggest shortcomings of the Ryzen architecture is the fact that they overclock really terribly. So that when you kind of put down a bunch of money on a custom loop liquid cooling system, it's pretty much wasted on a Ryzen system. Hopefully the new Ryzen plus CPUs will kind of fix this a bit. And because you can just drop it in the same motherboard, it might make it a very worthwhile upgrade for people who are who are kind of disappointed with the overclocking performance in their CPUs. Anyway, until the next video, bye bye.